Hello there, and welcome to The Nerd Run, the place where two mates from Sydney, Australia come together to talk about our pop culture interests and collections. Today you join us as we geek out on... Marvel Legends Armadillo Builder Figure Waste. So th this is seven figures, Jono, plus a builder figure. And at the very end of this one, we're going to talk about a special helmet that kind of has been released. And it relates, yeah. We're going to throw that in there. So look, let's just get right into it. Let's get nerd running. We're going to start with Shriek. Let's start right there. So tell me where this character's come from. The first time I was introduced to it, I, I, it might've been an earlier introduction. I'm not sure. was um, back in the Maximum Carnage storyline of the 90s. Yep. I don't know if you remember that one, Joe. I do. Yes. Cool. So it was, it was a big, you know, um, fight between Venom and Carnage and Spider-Man's caught in the middle and there's other heroes and villains and yeah, it was crazy. And Shriek definitely was on the side of Carnage. So uh, Sonic Powers, I think this is the first time we've actually seen her as a Marvel Legends figure. Very cool. So um, definitely if you want to get to know more about her, she featured heavily in uh, Maximum Carnage and also um, appeared later on. Oh, actually, I think it was around that same time with the Infinity War storyline. Awesome. And look so, so Infinity War, not the, t not the movie, Infinity War the comic series, which was a sequel to Infinity Gauntlet. So don't get confused between the movies here. How, 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 how could we possibly be confused by all that? That's very oh, clear. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Look, before we move on through these figures, you can see through the pictures that have been shown that she comes with alternate hands. So these yep. are very like playable figures. They've got great articulation to them. I, I see online people customizing and modifying and making very yeah. funny stop motion videos where they like take heads off different Marvel Legends figures and, you know, yeah. combine them with each other. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted to point that out, but I think that's a really cool feature about these. I love them. That's, that's why I've been, I think Hasbro's really stepped up with Marvel Legends. I was collecting Marvel Legends back when I was working at Toys R Us when they were out from Toy Biz. And so where they are now, Hasbro took them over um, quite a few years back now and then ran them into the ground and then have brought them back in a massive way. Oh, and yeah. What doing with today is amazing. Um, also, another thing, this entire wave, even though it doesn't seem it so far, is um, meant to be aimed as a No Way Home wave. So it's Spider-Man No Way Home. But as, Mar uh, as Hasbro has been doing lately, they chuck in some comic characters, which yep. Shriek is definitely one of them. And then they um, put in some movie characters and then sometimes they might chuck in something extra, which we'll talk about in a second. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll see some of these characters in the movie. Um, look, let's go to the next one, and that is Morlin here, who yep. looks like a vampire to me. Explain what's going on with this one. Okay. I guess you could call him a vampire, but he's not out to suck your blood. Okay. So he, he was a character first introduced in a Spider-Man storyline called The Other in The Amazing Spider-Man, written by, um, oh, and suddenly I'm blanking on his name, um, the guy who basically wrote all of Babylon 5. He okay. was writing Spider-Man for quite a few years there. Jay something, look it up. You can figure it out. Um, <laughs> anyway, he, he was um, writing the storylines at that time. And the storyline, the other, added a whole um, extra mythos to Spider-Man and that there was all these spider totems out there. So these characters that you know represented the basis of the, of the spider. He's one of these characters that would basically go around and feed off the life force of spider totems. So he was out to basically drain poor Peter Parker of all his life force. He came back in, and I think you've read this, Joe, Spider-Verse. Yes. Yeah. So they were fighting him as well as his um, relations, and he was a big one. So to have him as a figure is really cool. Yeah. I'm um, actually kind of excited about that. And he comes with the second head, um, which looks quite menacing, <laughs> you can see there. And he's got spots on his hands. What's, what's the deal with the spots on his hand? And that's how you drain your life force okay. out. Okay. Sucks it out of your brains. Or out of, it, it's life force. It's, you know, yeah, he's a vampire, but psychic type vampire, I guess. All right. Well, look, the next one I think needs no introduction. Putting it up on the screen now. You know who this guy is. J. Jonah Jameson. It is from in all his glory from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man and now the MCU Spider-Man movies with that beautiful... Post, yeah. Was it post credits, mid credits scene, whatever it was, um, which was such yeah, a huge -credit, thing, yeah. which has led into um, No Way Home um, in, in terms yep. of the storyline of it. So, yeah, tell us uh, about this character, this figure right here. I love it. It's J. Jonah Jameson, which you could use almost as an older version of J. Jonah Jameson from uh, the Sam Raimi Spider Man, like you said. Yep. And also currently in No Way, oh, so Far From Home is where we first saw him. And That's right. I think we're going to see him again in No Way Home. So really interesting. The packaging for this figure, actually, interestingly, 
doesn't say No Way Home down the bottom. It just has the Spider-Man logo from the Spider-Man uh, home movies because <laughs> they all seem to have home in the title. Yep. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, really cool. And we get two heads, so, you know, one being really serious, one being a little bit less serious. And I love that he comes with a pointing finger. He needs oh. a pointing finger. That's beautiful. Absolutely has to. And and the fact that his head comes off, you can relive that beautiful scene where he dressed up as Spider-Man. So I, I look forward to people modifying their yeah. Spider-Man figures with his head on it. That's going to be really cool. Um, Actually, quick aside, there was a really cool J. Jonah Jameson comic style figure um, a couple of years ago in the retro uh, line that they made to look like the old Toy Biz packaging. Awesome. And he, there was an alternate head where his mouth was webbed up. Uh, <laughs> It's really cool. Yeah, and here, here his alternate head is his mouth's open. He's he's saying something oh, about Spider Man. That's for sure. He's giving him words. Yeah, cool. And the next one again, we, we're getting into the very familiar territory here for any Marvel kind of fans, um, you know, and, and just general public. This is Doctor Strange, and this is a yep. really cool looking figure. I love from the get go the the alternate hands that come with the kind of magic effect going on there. Yeah, um, which we we all love that kind of symbolism within the movies. Yeah, I, a really nice representation of Benedict Cumberbatch. I think it's a, a great Doctor Strange figure. I'm really intrigued to see where this goes because he's not wearing the costume that we see um, in all of the trailer, or in the trailer he does wear it at one point in time. But there's a lot of rumours online at the moment with people thinking that this actually isn't going to be Doctor Strange in the movie, but we'll wait and see. Whoa, that's a huge, huge rumour. I have not heard that one. Look, they could be completely off their rocker because this particular rumour has been floating around for a while as to who's orchestrating all the trouble that's happening to Peter Parker in the background. And it relates to a really big, amazing Spider-Man storyline. But that's all I'm going to say because, okay. you know, why, why ruin it for everyone? That's, that's for another nerd run in the future. Um, I love that exactly. this one as well comes with Armadillo's head. So straight away, we, you get this one, you get a bit of extra playability right there. Um, that's that's an awesome headpiece. I think it looks so menacing. It is. Um, yeah, cool. Well, look, we're, we're getting into the Spider-Men now of the waves. We are. So we're, we're going to start with my son's favorite superhero, and that is Miles Morales. And this is the game averse. This is the Spider-Man um, Insomniac game yeah. um, version of him, which, you know, is brilliant. And I think this figure looks like it's just jumped right out of the screen. He's got that the electric, what is it, Venom Punch? Venom Touch? Whatever uh, yeah, it is. The Venom Blast, yeah. Blast. Yeah, I love it. What do you think of it? I think he's fantastic. He'd stand in as a, a Miles Morales character wherever you put him. So um, very classic looking Miles Morales uh, if you think of the standard Marvel Universe. But yeah, you're right. He jumps straight out of the game. So for those of you that have played the PS4, PS5 game, this is going to be a cool figure to have. Um, especially if you've got the, the other game of a Spider-Man that came out quite a few a couple of years back now. Um, and it's quite hard to get if you're trying to track him down. So this would be a nice one to jump onto if you get the chance. Yeah, I was a fan of that Spider-Man costume from the game. I know some people didn't like the color combination, but I thought it was, nah, it was very great. striking. Yeah, it really and yeah. It became its own. Um, all right, let's get to the first of the two Spider-Men here as well um, in terms yeah. of the – we've got the black and gold suit Spider-Man. So this is a Peter Parker type character. Yeah. Yep, and, and where's this one from? So the last two Spider-Man costumes that we're going to see in this are directly from No Way Home. Cool. So um, if you've seen the trailer and if you saw our last episode, there were snippets of it at the end when we talked about um, the, all the, the Lego that was coming up for Eternals. We also talked about that trailer because we released that day. Um, so this is cool. You actually see it appear in the trailer at one point where he's, I think, fighting in a uh, possibly at school and he suddenly the costume comes on because everybody knows who he is. So he doesn't need to hide it. So, um, yeah, well, interested to see what the story behind the black costume is, but black and gold is definitely an interesting look. So in the in the movie, we've kind of gone from costumes that these characters wear to these nano-type suits. Is this another one of those nano-type suits we're assuming? Well, you, you see it in the – if you get a chance to watch the trailer again, you'll actually see it okay. um, Yeah, wrap around him. Like he's, he gets attacked, he gets thrown across the room, and next minute he's in the suit, I think it was, if I remember rightly. So, yeah. Cool. I'm sure you'll attach some video to that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and the last one we've got here is the integrated suit, the Spider-Man integrated yeah. suit, which is that more kind of familiar look we've seen in the MCU um, with the, what is it, the, is it the, called the Scarlet Spider suit, the one with the big spikes at the back. Uh, Iron Spider. Iron Spider, not Scarlet Spider. That's a different character, isn't it? Um, it is. Yes, it the, is. the Iron Spider. So what do you think of this one? Well, I love the name, the integrated suit. It is really a, a mesh of the three 
Iron Man um, created costumes in the MCU for Spider-Man um, all merged into one. And if we remember the end of uh, Far From Home, he created his own suit using some Sp- uh, Iron Man gear on board a Stark jet. Yep. So it's kind of cool that he's sort of homaged all the suits he's worn at this point in time into one. Um, I like it. It's cool. Cool. It's going to be a nice suit. And, and, and just before we go, John, really briefly, like, they, like you said at the get-go, they introduced um, or released around the same time a Marvel Legends series, Iron Spider Electronic Helmet. Um, so the images are going up now. You can see not only does this thing look cool from the outside and it's got different colored lights, but the inside of this thing is incredible. What's going on with the inside of this? This is showing us the kind of nanotech side of it all. I really like it. Yeah, they've, they've put a lot of detail into it, haven't they? Like it's got that tech circuitry sort of Iron Man feel to it. It's cool. It's a wearable just like we've seen Hasbro be doing for the last couple of years with uh, the Iron Man helmets, the War Machine helmets, um, all those Star Wars, um, yes. you know, uh, Darth Vader and um, pilot helmets from the Rebel Alliance. So it's cool to see another one. Uh, Ant-Man had a helmet. So yep. we're just getting the Iron Spider, which was the suit that he wore in Infinity War and in Endgame. So that's kind of cool. But we did forget one little thing. What was that? Oh, the, what, well, actually, not a little thing, did, did we? It's quite a big well, thing. Actually, it's quite, it's quite large, yeah, <laughs> And so. that is the Builder figure, which is the yeah. Armadillo figure. Tell us about this. Yeah. So if you collect um, almost all, I think it's almost all the figures. I'm just going to confirm that. Give me two seconds. But you're going you're to get a figure called Armadillo. Now, Armadillo is uh, another... Um, animal-based villain for Spider-Man, but he actually started off in a Captain America issue. Cool. Captain America 308 back in the day, so back in the um, the early 80s. Um, he's appeared in a lot of comics. He's big and hulking. He's kind of a bit stupid. In fact, if you <laughs> want to see uh, a funny scene with Armadillo in it, if you've watched that new series on Disney Plus called MODOK, uh, Modoc goes to recruit him and a couple of other D-list hero, uh, villains. Yep. And yeah, he's not a very smart man. But the cool <laughs> thing is, he, his plot in that um, that episode of Modoc pretty much sums up the whole character from the comics. <laughs> so um, definitely worth a, a look. Yeah. And, um, and speaking now, of what you said before, it doesn't. It seems like you don't need to get the integrated suit to get the combination of this figure. So um, you can get all the other six. And, and, and that yeah. one's just a kind of bonus. But I think that's obvious. That's the draw card of this of this collection, isn't it? The 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 big new Spider-Man suit. So um And that's what Hazard has been doing with these Marvel Legend Builder Figure waves, because that's all they are these days. They've always got a builder figure now. Yeah. Um and there's always the key character, the one that's probably the most popular, is the one that doesn't come with a piece. So if you want to build that figure, you're gonna buy all the characters you don't care about. Yep, and, and that's, that's how they right. get you. <laughs> that's how they get you. I, I think this is a really good wave, though. It's um really good cross-section across the comics and the movies and a lot of fun characters. Awesome. Well, look, thanks, Jono, and thank you for coming on a Nerd Run with us. Um, of course, we'd love a like and subscribe, but Jono, we're going to keep this going no matter what, so we'll catch you next time. Keep on running.